had a request from the lovely Kay. She would like me to construct another structure, garden structure, like this. But, very similar, but we want to turn it into one of those like little beach cabanas that you often see in Bali, where you can have right, um, a floor and you can put a mat down and you can get a massage. So we're going to give it a go. We've selected this area near the fish pond. Fish pond. And as you can see, I've already staked out the rough dimensions. It's not going to be a huge structure. Um, and we're using it hopefully from mostly re recycled timber. And the first uh, thing is to get some post supports. Instead of digging holes here, I'm going to try a, a little different approach and have some post stirrups installed in the ground here concreted in and then we'll build the structure on the top of that. I've um, already attached a cross beam to two post supports and the idea of course is that once these things go into the ground we can use the cross beam here as a level and I'll be able to get that nice and level and it's going to be square so it's about 1670 each leg of the square reason for that is that's the timber that we have I've um, set the thing up just to get the position of the post holes well as roughly as I can make them there is a little bit of squaring up to do but the thing is basically square that way the trick is going to be getting those holes down and the posts concreted in without moving but I plan to do it this way I plan to move the whole thing and then drill the holes down where they're marked and then lift the whole structure and put that down and then do the adjustments in order to drill these holes we've purchased one of these Sutton Tools Garden Auger 100 mil boom attaches to a drill well I've drilled the first hole and it's quite successful so we'll do another one Okay, well we've got it down and we've got it levelled, now we just pour concrete in. have water in the holes it will seep up and the concrete will seep okay well we'll leave that for a day or so or even more and then I'll uh, come back out and then it gets deconstructed because all I needed all this thing for was to get the posts in position for the uprights and um, once we get the uprights in then we're well on our way Okay, it's day two, and um, we're going to keep these rails in position. So what we've done is we've notched out, and I'll coat screw them in. I've already done that one. And then we will have our joists going across. 
and that should give us the floor. Of course it'll have to be braced at the top sides but we'll get to that. Well these two are in and I'm just in the process now of bracing them for before I go and start with the others. And it's very very hot today and I don't think I'll be here for very much longer because it's just too hot. Now, spirit level. 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 Beautiful. Right. Next. Okay, it's the end of day two and we have the structure basically up, or well, at least the uprights in. I still have to do something with the roof of course, but that that will happen. This is all bracing just to keep the thing in situ while we strengthen it and beefen it up and do all sorts of things to it. But there we go. End of well, day. Well it's day three and what a change in the weather. It's been raining quite substantially but we shall press on a little bit and see how far we can get on just measuring out the um, uh, spaces for the windows and the side rails. Okay. And to make life a little bit of e easier, I'm actually using these angle brackets to secure the rail to the uprights. Okay, well we've got the three rails in now and I think that'll actually do for today because it's so muggy and the weather is a bit iffy and I can't be bothered today. So we'll press on tomorrow hopefully. Okay, um, day three and we're, um, we've got a lull in the weather. So we're going to put the top rails in and um, you can see already I've set this first one up because there's a slight bow in some of these uprights that I had to actually cut down to make 4x4s. So we'll now fix these, this first one up with the brackets and hold it in place. Well, I've finished for the day and it doesn't seem like I've been very productive, but I actually have. Um, because I've made the, um, the front top rail <laughs> like this. And that's just... The reason for it, of course, is because there is a distinct shortage of timber because of COVID and bushfires that we've had last year. And I'm going to run out if I don't watch very carefully these I have allocated over here for the joists for the floor and I have yet to purchase the flooring I know that Bunnings actually do have it in stock so I will have to go there tomorrow I guess and uh, get my share <laughs> anyway this little baby here um, 
it's just made of a couple of bits of scrap and a couple of bits of poly pipe it doesn't have to be a load bearing thing so it's okay and there it is up in position just a nice little decorative feature and then we'll have roof beams and other bits and pieces on here so we're well, getting to another day I can't remember now I've lost count four I think um, I've just put the joists in so now we're actually ready for the flooring so and then I have to find some timber for the roof but we'll get there in the end well we're now on to the um, decking phase putting the floor down on this and I've already um, given it a coat of um, a weatherproofing thing that's got a bit of a stain in it which makes it look yellow honey coloured so I will now proceed to put the deck screws into the decking Right, I'll continue to put them on till we get to the end. Okay, now we have the deck down and <laughs> I had a couple of boards left over, three, which I did take into account anyway. Well, it's another day and we're actually fitting the windows. <laughs> now, the windows are about, oh God knows, they're probably 75 years old or even older, so they're not really very square. However, We've trimmed them up as much as we can. And I'm just fitting the frames, these uprights in. Yep. We've pre-squared these up and I use the term light. And now comes the moment of truth. Ah, oh, look at that. Perfect. Oh yeah, beautiful. Now, as you can see, they're not really that square, but <laughs> that'll do. I'll anchor them in. Hopefully the wind doesn't get up. We can see that there's a bit of a gap at the top. That's for expansion. <coughs> LOL, laughing out loud. Well, I've pre-installed this little window with a bit of a frame around the frame. <laughs> Okay, I'll continue on with that. Well, that window is now anchored in there in position, and all I have to do is the other one. On the other side, that window is now anchored in there in position, and all I have to do is the other one on the other side. But I've run out of screws, so I have to go up to my favourite shop and get some more. Well, I've been up to my favourite shop, and I got myself some more screws, and we now have another window in. Now, it's pretty rough, you'll see all over here. Part of this problem is the lack of timber and supplies. I'm having to um, 
scrounge and scavenge stuff so I had to do a little join in here a little half lap join on each side to extend those pieces to give me a little bit more support on the window frame but anyway hey it's a bush build but I don't think it's looking too badly the trouble is <laughs> that 75 year old window is so bowed <laughs> it looks like the Edamoga pub to give you an example of what I've been working with these is one of the another one of these windows before I've actually touched it and it, this one's got some one two three or well, say four panes of glass going to be missing now so I might have a look and see if I can get some um, maybe even some perspex clear acrylic cut and I might do that one up because this is going to look a little bit oddball unless I have a third window I think I'll check it out. We have another one over here, and um, I think they're all the same size. Maybe I can salvage this one by taking two panes of glass out of the other one. I'll check the, the dimensions and see if that's possible. I did check it out, and um, that window, I have actually removed all of these panes of glass out of this frame, cleaned it all up, tried to clean the glass, <laughs> But it's obviously it's I don't know how old it is. It got got it's got to be 75 years old. Um, and and uh, I've re putted the windows in. So I'm going to let this putty set for a few days, and um, then we'll paint the window up, and that will be my third one. So I didn't have to get any perspex because I did manage to salvage the glass panes. Although if you look very closely you will see that there would have been a crack in there and I've <laughs> used a bit of clear packaging tape to repair it, but that'll do. Hey, it's bush building as I keep saying. So while I was waiting for the um, putty to set on that window, I've had a bit of a major issue with my Makita. Apparently, or well, what happened was the lifting mechanism, which is this particular screwed part here which is metal goes into this which is what they term the gearbox and it stripped the thread now apparently this is a very common issue with this particular my uh, saw mlt 100n and i'm not very impressed because the saw as i was using it, it the um, the whole blade just dropped right to the bottom of the travel into zero i've ordered another part and I have temporarily put a couple of uh, winds of very thin copper wire in there and it seems to have actually um, fixed the slap and it does raise up, well it appears to raise up and down. I think I'm just going to leave it because what I've done is I've substituted it now, I've just gone out and spent another two hundred dollars on a an Ozito table saw which is going to be a lot more flimsy but I need it to do some certain cuts that I was actually planning to do on this one soon so that I could finish this little um, cabana. This is the table saw that I've just bought from um, Bunnings it's actually a 2000 watt which is 500 watts more than the actual Makita that we've just stripped down so this will be the subject of a different video and I'm going to unbox it. Not on this video of course. If you wish to see it, you'll have to search for it. Well after a delay of a day or so, <laughs> I've got this little, um, what is it, a Zito table saw, cheapy. And it's all set up, I made a sled for it, see another video, I put another video up there shortly um, about putting this together. And now I'm going to finish off what I was started two or three days ago, and that is finish trenching these uprights for the third window. Western power just cut me power off. Mongrels.
It isn't actually, it's because I've got my two 600 watt lights going. And there we have the first one, all ready to go now. Made out of scrap material, I might admit. Okay, I'll continue on with the second one. Okay, well, it's another day and we've got um, the third window in. It was very, very sunny this morning. I didn't bother painting this one yet. I've done it on one side, but I didn't get round to doing the other side caught up in other things. Now because we're making this out of recycled timber and this was an old um, a couple of old pallets machinery pallets I uh, because of the short lengths I've had to extend them because I want to make these all the fancy little things so I'm actually making them all the same length by extending those pieces with the 45s by half lap joints and um, that's why I was so anxious to get the new table saw underway. And I have been giving it a good workout today by making these half lap joints and cutting the 45s and things. So I'm just in the middle of finishing this last beam off. Which I'm so what I'm doing here is I'm just um, fitting these parts together. So wood glue slap a bit of that on put a clamp in a couple of screws anchor them down As I keep saying, this is a bush build, nothing too fancy. I mean, if we were in Bali, we'd been using bamboo for this. Now, that's going to be me for the day because I've been at it since this morning, early. Poor dog's been neglected. There we go. So, that's another roof beam. Just a couple more to go. Okay, it's now a few days later. We've had a bit of rain and you can see that progress has been made. I have um, installed the roof beams on the structure and I've also put in some uprights. Um, in the middle of the windows. This is because we're going to put some um, bamboo. Uh, I can't remember, I'll tell you in a minute what it's called. It's called Eden Balcony Screening. And it's in this charcoal color. It's uh, one meter high and it's three meters wide. And the idea is it's going to go from the pole, bottom of the window sill, all the way around and then we'll meet it in the middle on the way back and so we will have in effect a three-sided figure three-walled figure 
and then up here we will put in some slats just to fill in the uh, window areas on each side there's not much to fill in there and above we will use some strapping and we will go across each of these um, beams roof beams and we will complete the structure and it will be basically like this one in here so should give us a nice little shady nook I would think the whole structure of course now will have to be painted in our charcoal color which is basically the rest of the scheme of the house which is this charcoaly color um, but we will leave the windows the very bright purple to give it some color well I think I'm on our <laughs> my last legs <laughs> last leg um, we've got some of these battens up which fill in and the ones as I said before down the bottom here will be the other things that I got this morning from Bunnings I'll put them up when we've painted the whole lot because it all needs now to be painted but it's getting there well we've had a lovely day today it's a good Friday and I got up early this morning because it was going to be a nice sunny day and we finished painting well <laughs> we put a coat on this is the article and now it's going to be ready to have the balustrading put on the bottom and then the last thing will be the battens on the roof and it'll be done okay well here we are we've um, now basically finished the structure and this is what it looks like not very neat except the magpies just shat on it there we are. 